So this is uh, the second shader lesson. And here I'm gonna show you a practical use of using shaders. So why don't I start off by showing you what we're gonna be uh, looking at today. So here we have two ghostly cooks in a old storage room. And as you can see, um, to give them that ghostly feel, I'm making them wave around a little bit. And this is actually using a shader. So we have basically um, a background image here these are two um, standard images. Uh, actually, it's the same image. One is just rotated. And then um, I'm passing in a shader that basically gives them this wavy, ghostly feel to them. So let's have a look at the code behind this, see how this works. So I have a very standard libgdx uh, desktop setup. Um, so we have the desktop launcher. I haven't changed any code in here. This is default. And then <clears throat> in core, two classes. So the first one is the, uh, the standard class that gets set up when you first uh, create a libgdx project. I've just deleted the, uh, the code that shows the uh, libgdx um, logo and uh, added my own code in here. So let's go through here. Um, this, as you can see, there's not much here. Um, and then I'll show you where the magic's happening. So we uh, create a stage load in our background image, which is the, uh, the cobwebby room. Um, we add that to the stage. And, and then I add a second actor, which is our ghost group. I'll go through that in a minute. Um, then I load in uh, two ghosts. So uh, basically just an image, set its position, and I add it to the, um, I add it as an actor to our ghost group. I'll show you that in a minute. And then I create a second uh, image, second cook, and I rotated him and added him. And then we just have the standard render method, clear the screen, stage act, stage draw, and that's it. So what's happening in ghost group? So um, this is basically standard class and it extends the, the group um, actor. Um, and then we have five, variables we have a frame buffer two strings to load our shaders in the shader program itself and the time variable uh, I made this an instance class so if you've not used these before basically um, it creates one instance of the class um, which can be used anywhere I've just done that for this example and that's why in uh, the code here you've got we don't have to create the class um, you just get the instance of it and then we have uh, the, uh, when it loads up the instance of this uh, class, it just sets some basic parameters. So we set time to zero. We load in our two shaders, the vertex and the fragment shader. We load them into the shader program and we set uh, pedantic to false. And then we create a, a frame buffer. So if you're not aware, frame buffer basically is where your image is rendered to in the background, uh, normally before it's displayed on the um, on your monitor. Uh, we override the act method, uh, and we're only basically using that to update time. And then we have the draw method, which again we're overriding. So let me go through this in detail. What's happening here? So first of all, we, the batch has been passed in and the batch has already begun. So because we're gonna do something here to change the way the batch is working, we need to make sure we end it and then we flush it to make sure everything has been rendered correctly. Uh, so there's nothing left behind. Then our, we start up our, our frame buffer because we wanna um, cache uh, some information there. And we start the batch again and basically draw the images again. Now in this case, what we're drawing is um, the two ghosts. That's all we're drawing here. The, the um, background image of the dusty room, so cobwebby room, has already been rendered. This, we're just focused on the two ghosts. So we draw the ghosts um, to our frame buffer. So that means behind the scenes. We now have, the, if you can imagine, there's an image of the two cooks uh, on their own with nothing else. Now we want to start the batch again, uh, because what we're gonna do is take that image that's behind the scenes in the frame buffer, 
apply our shader to it and then render it to the screen so you can see it. So we start the batch again, we load in our shader, um, we set two properties in the shader, so in this case time um, and the resolution of the screen. We get our frame buffer that's been hidden behind the scenes, we convert that into a texture and then we render it using the batch draw and, and just remember uh, what's happening behind the scenes is that as part of the rendering we're applying our shader script um, and then we need to set the batch back to uh, its default shader uh, so there's always a shader going on behind there's always a shader in place uh, you're just not aware of it if you've never used shaders before and do note we don't end the batch because um, we want whoever might next be calling or be reliant on the um, batch. Uh, if you remember, it's all part of the stage, so the stage might have many actors. Uh, we don't want to close that batch down because we'll get an error. And that's all there is. So uh, hopefully that shows you a, um, a possible uh, practical way of using shaders in your game. Um, in this case, uh, Basically, I could add many ghosts. You can imagine many ghosts um, on a large map and I can apply the same effect to all of them at the same time. I hope this has been useful. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you.